Welcome back to Beg, Borrow, Steel, where we finally got access to our new stadium and the great and the good have turned out for the opening ceremony. Lander is here representing the players. Tyrese John Jules got Uncle Danny to come over to help cut the ribbon. Granted, Conchita from the office did buy red balloons rather than blue, but it's still a celebratory day. But will we win our first game at the new Europa Stadium? But before that match, we've got to welcome another new supporter to the channel. Chris Roundtree headed over to the Patreon page and has signed up as a top tier patron. We'll put a link down in the video description below that will take you straight to that Patreon page if you'd like to show your support. We're now within striking distance of having 20 Patreon supporters of the channel. We're going to try and thank Chris by getting a win on the first day of our new stadium. Let's see if we can get the job done. But before we get to the game, let's update you on the news, and there is plenty of it. We'll start with transfers. Ola Wasagan Ikachukwu has not rejoined the club on loan. Far from it. In fact, he secured a permanent deal moving to Everton. We'll approach them in the January window and see whether they fancy loaning him out to us. But I'm not placing any bets on it. Earlier in the window, we'd had an offer for our first-choice goalkeeper from Real Madrid. Madrid did not come calling again. But the next best alternative did. That's right, Sunderland came in with an offer for Davide Barossi. This time, he was none too concerned when we turned it down. In fact, when the transfer window closed, he approached us and said he was no longer unhappy at the club. So we snuck in and offered him a new contract with a much higher minimum fee release clause. And now he is tied to the club for the foreseeable future. What other news do we have? Well... We've now got a Spanish under-21 international amongst our ranks as well. Young Cordoba has made his debut for the Spanish under-21 team and it shows the strides that we are making in our quest to become one of the leading clubs in Spain. However, we've got more news to show you, including a new transfer. And here is the signing in question. Johnny will be joining in January. From Inter Miami, what was our priority to try and bring in defenders, particularly fullbacks? Is Johnny one of those? No, he's not. Do we need a midfielder? Well, only if they're a halfback. Can Johnny play there? Not really. He can play as a defensive midfielder. And when I first started scouting him, I thought maybe, you know, there could be a halfback in there. But then when the player traits were fully scouted, he gets into the opposition area, gets forward whenever possible. He would be vacating that halfback spot on a regular basis. But I decided to bring him in anyway. The scouts really rate him. I think he could play as any of the three further forward midfielders that we have. We're pretty well stocked in that department already. But Johnny's only 26. He has been capped by the United States. And I think he's got some pretty all-round good elements to his game. So I'm pretty pleased to get him on board. We do have another player that we are tracking pretty rigorously by head over to on the shortlist. Also available at the end of his contract is Kieran Murray, another player that the scouts have given an A-grade rating to, another central midfielder that arguably we don't need, but he looks good and he's only 20. And when we've looked at his scout reports in terms of the transfer of interest, he's extremely interested in coming. So shall we try and sign him? Let's do that. So he's extremely interested in coming. Here are his demands. He's extremely, extremely interested. No, he's not interested at all. And it doesn't matter what I change these options to here to try and sweeten the deal. Well, I'm afraid I can't convince young Kieran Murray to even start negotiating a contract. He's quite happy on his 450 quid a week at Bohemians, but he only has a short amount of time on his contract remaining. I'm hoping that once he's out of contract, maybe he will be happier to negotiate terms. Maybe he'll even leave Bohemians and be available on a free transfer. And he's another player that I would like to bring into the club. And so to that inaugural game at our new stadium, we're going to be taking on bottom of the table, Almeria. 15,000 fans are expected. It's going to be a sellout. We should probably also bring you up to speed on our form since we bowed out of Europe to Bromby. And it's been none too bad. Plenty of wins, although 
I wouldn't say in any of these games we've looked particularly convincing. After losing to Bromby, we then bounced back into the league. We played Granada. We won 2-1. Jordi and Bula got both of the goals for us. Granada scored late on to make it a little bit more nerve-wracking. Before we played Valencia. Valencia are top of the table, by the way. What a win this was. It came late. Alessandro Rossi getting the winner for us after I thought we'd given away a good win by allowing them to score in the 90th minute. This was a result and a half, as was the next game against Barcelona, to be brutally honest with you. If there's a game where we have looked good this season, it was probably the Barca match. You'll see that we had more shots and more shots on target and a superior XG. We just couldn't find the breakthrough against our City rivals. But nil-nil against Barcelona is certainly not a result that you should be disappointed with. We then had a 2-1 victory against Alaves. Escobar sent off again, second time this season. He's pretty much dead to me, if I'm honest. Before our big disappointment, 2-0 up against Real Vallecano, we let them back into the game with a penalty, and then they equalised into stoppage time. I was a bit disappointed because otherwise we'd have had four consecutive wins because we've had a good win against Real Sociedad and a good win against Betis in our most recent game. So form is good. We've not lost since the second game of the season when Atletico Madrid beat us 2-1. Lots of these victories have been narrow. We've not blown any teams away. And today we're going to be up against a bottom of the table side who I think will be pretty dogged defensively. Let's show you how we're going to line up. So our side has a pretty settled look about it now. Barossi is always our first choice in goal. Now that Escobar is getting sent off every other weekend, we're playing Bora as our first choice left back. Our two centre-backs are performing pretty well as well, by the way. Both of them had a bit of a rough first season at the club. But now that they both speak Spanish and have settled in, well, Samila Koulibaly is playing very well, as is Dainel Simao, who's also been getting regular ratings above a 7. And I think those two are forming a decent little partnership back there. We've got our normal midfield four for today's game. It's only up front where we've not really settled on our first choice partnership. Rossi is getting plenty of game time. He has scored plenty of goals in the league. But he has started throwing in a couple of pretty abject performances recently. And then it's the same for our other starting striker, really. Good for a game. And then missing for a couple of games. And Bula's going to get the nod today. Tyrese John Jules has been picking up a few knocks recently. Not training that well either. But he's been okay. Just not prolific. And misses a few chances as well. Young Brendan McComb has been injured since Escobar clobbered him in training. He's come back and made one sub appearance, but he's not looked stunning so far. But we have got a much stronger bench than we used to have, including the little magician on there as well, who shows no signs, by the way, of slowing down. He's still improving in training. And if we just show you what the little man did in the last game against Betis, it would be as you imagined, I would have thought. Came on late as a substitute. Got himself a free kick in the 78th minute. And when Lander steps up for a free kick, well, there's only going to be one ending, isn't there? He rolls back the years, bends it into the top corner, just doing Lander-type things. So today, we're going to be taking on Almeria on paper. It looks an easy game to christen the new stadium with. But we know games against the bottom teams rarely turn out to be as easy as you would like. Let's see how we get on. So we're just about ready for kickoff. Normally, when you have your first competitive game in a new stadium, you've already scouted it out in a few pre-season friendlies. But we've not had that luxury. I've not seen this stadium either. So it's going to be as much a surprise to me as it is to you, it looks reasonably impressive though, doesn't it? Two tiers. Looks like we might have roofs covering the stands as well. This is luxury the likes of which we've not seen during our first five or six seasons at the club. It actually looks like quite a grand little arena. Pretty pleased we seem to have built some 
pretty hefty offices in one of the corners. I tell you what, this looks quite grand, doesn't it? Oh, we have been odd-jobbing it around sharing grounds around Barcelona for the previous three years since we moved out of our old stadium that was too small, even for the second division in Spain. And now we're in our own arena and it is looking rather slick. What we need to do now, of course, is celebrate its opening with a win. And we've got Milanese in. He's played a ball through to Rossi. Pretty direct from us there. But I think we gave them an opening scare and we're on the move again. We've got Mbula, Milanese, Cordoba. Working the ball through. Here we go. It's Jordi Mbula. Oh, it's Cordoba with a shot. Real Madrid look like they've taken the lead pretty early. They are going to be a tough team to compete with this season, I think. We're not really shopping in the same kind of park as them. But if we could get close, another top seven finish, maybe a run in the cup, I would be incredibly pleased. To today's game, though, we're in again. Rossi's on the edge of the air. He's got the ball back. Here's Diego Rosa. What a goal to christen the new stadium. And it's Diego Rosa that's got it. Oh, he's right on the edge of the box. He's bent one into the corner of the goal. And we are underway for the afternoon. The fans only had to wait seven minutes. And that is a very neat and tidy goal. Could we get another one before half time? Just to make this game a comfortable afternoon for the fans. They've gone close with an indirect free kick. We should probably pause the game and praise the players, I think, for making such a strong start. That's helped them with their body language. And here we go again. We've got a throw deep in their territory. Rosanas gives the ball away. One of the players I really do think we could do with upgrading. But Mbula's in. Not quite as an impressive a strike as the first goal at the new stadium. But we are now 2-0 up. 16 minutes into the game, their keeper really has made a poor error of judgment there. But we can't feel sorry for him. We're 2-0 in the lead, racing our way through this first half. We're halfway through the first period. Here come the highlights again, and it's our opponents that come forward, but we've won the ball back. Here's Umbula, dropping pretty deep, even though he's the advanced forward. He's got it to Milanese, one of the Caraleros, Cordoba, Rosa, Rossi, 3-0 up. This is the most convincing I think we've looked. Well, in quite a few matches, I would say, we've been scratching out the wins rather than dominating. Which I know is like me saying that my diamond shoes are pinching a little bit. We are the smallest team in the division. We have been getting a bit lucky with some of our wins, but we are blowing Almeria out of the water. Giving away a free kick, though. It's all highlights in this game. And they've slung one in. Barossi celebrates his new contract with safe hands there. And maybe that's not the highlight. As we are continuing, Barossi's bowled it out to Koulibaly. We're still scarred by Koulibaly's mistake in Denmark, but no mistakes this time. He's got a good ball through to Mbula. He's had a shot charge down. And we are looking ferocious. We've got a ball into the box from the corner this time. Mbula's going to pick it up. Got a lot of work to do. He's got the ball to Bura. Milan AC. What a strike that is. We're 4-0 up. We've not even done half an hour yet. And our two Caraleros are battling this afternoon to see who can score the best goal on the opening day at our new stadium. Is this better than Rosa's effort? He's hit it on the half volley. About the same distance out, it's arrowed into the top corner of the net. And the boys mean business today. Real Madrid may be winning their game. They're playing Valencia, by the way, in a top-of-the-table clash. But we are absolutely on top of our game today. We've got the ball away again. It was a bit of a scramble, but we've done it and we're approaching half time. What a good half of football that has been. We're deep into stoppage time. We're still pressing, though. Kula Bali's got the ball to Pacheco. We're in around the sides of them again. Here's Milanese. 
he's had another go a bit more speculative this time and my goodness we have looked good in that first half we're going to go and tell the boys that they have played superbly we'd like a second half just as good you rarely get it in football manager but we'll see how they do So four goals in that first period, which will probably mean we'll lose the second half 1-0. And it will be a little bit of a damp affair. But we did look good in that first half. And we are competitive at this level. We really are holding our own against the teams in this Premier Division. And I tell you what, we're looking like we could have another good campaign. And the finances are building all the time in the background. We could keep this run of form up. I'm going to go back to the board in January. I'm going to ask them for better junior coaching again. I'm going to ask them for better training facilities and youth facilities. And if we can keep building in two or three years time, we might just be bringing through some real talented youngsters of our own to supplement what we're able to bring in on free transfers, loans and end of contract deals to try and build a squad that's not just qualifying for Europe every year, but maybe has the potential to go deep in a European competition and ultimately would like to try and qualify for the Champions League before this save finishes and maybe even win the Copa del Rey. I know that's going to be a tough ask, but that is the ultimate dream. Are we ever going to be able to win La Liga without spending any money on transfers? don't think so. I don't think we could do that. That might just be a dream too far. But with 65 minutes gone in this game, I think it's time to freshen it up and see whether we could get one more goal before the end. Back underway, Brendan McComb is on to continue his rehabilitation from injury. And the little magician is on as well. Lander comes on for, what, 25, 30 minutes. You can't open the new stadium without your star man dusting off his boots and just going out there and waving to the fans could he even get on the end of a set piece maybe curl home one of those free kicks put in one of those delicious corners to help us get another goal look out for McComb by the way we're looking out for him I think he's only 21 years old he's been hampered by injury since he joined the club has not looked great and has missed a fair few chances just like that we're not writing him off yet. He could be another one of those players that needs a year in Spain just to acclimatise. But he's not looked very composed in front of goal in the appearances that he's had so far. And maybe our search for a first choice striker might go on into another transfer window because none of the ones we've bought in have really impressed me so far. I don't think we have that regular 25 goal a season marksman that's going to replace Rossi now that Rossi is well. He's 31 now and he's not going to be with us forever. 82 minutes on the clock and we've let Almeria get back into the game. I did say that I thought this second half could be a damp squib and we'd lose it 1-0. I could be on the money with my prediction there. We've let a player free at the back post. We've let them get to the byline far too easily as well. And we've lost our clean sheet on our first game in our new stadium. We've got perhaps one more chance to try and put a bit of gloss on our afternoon to send the fans home happy. And there is the magician. It's a beautiful ball. McCoon could have got on the end of that, but decided to give us another go at building up play instead. Here's Koulibaly. He's got the ball out to our left back. He's not exactly dashing his way forward. He's running like a bag full of ferrets down there. But he's got the ball to Rosa and to Pacheco. And another one of our midfielders has let fly. Perhaps not the one we want. We all want a land a goal. I'm aware of that. But it's not to be this afternoon. But I don't think you can quibble too much with how well the boys have done there. 4-1, first day of the new stadium. Yes, we're up against the bottom of the table side. But well, those ties can sometimes be pretty tricky affairs. And we have looked pretty ruthless in our performance. And I think Madrid have held on to beat Valencia. So we go second in the table. Ten games played. We're one point behind Madrid. And I think we're doing pretty well. But we've got to go away and play another batch of games. 
by the time you come back and visit us, we could have plummeted our way down the table. But you never know, we might still be up there in the top five or six teams as we try to beg, borrow and steal our way into Europe once more.